Hello, my name is Kat and I like Angora bunny rabbits and I brush them and I keep them for pets and woolers and a little side braiding for pets for friends. Um, but I have a hard time finding videos to show people uh, pet quality grooming for an Angora that's really easy to take care of. Uh, and then I had one that I needed to set up for a family that's going to get him today. And I was like, oh, I'll make a video. So I've already brushed one side of him because I forgot. So, oh, let's go over supplies. So to pad an Angora, you need a flat surface about waist height. I have an apron on because I don't like to get my clothes dirty. Uh, I have two jars. I like glass because in winter it kind of helps with the static. I have a jar for my good seconds for hair and then stuff I'm going to throw away that has hay in it usually. But for seconds, I make wool dryer balls, little cute rugs, kid toys, so two jars. I have a cloth, that way the rabbit doesn't slip. I use just a buffet table that I got off Craigslist that I can store all my stuff in. Rabbit pellets, some people like fruit. I use a pellet, it's easy to clean up. And then my grooming supplies. I have a plastic fine tooth comb and I have a high grade pair of scissors. I bought these off Amazon for $20 and then I pay a local gal to sharpen them for me once a year. Totally worth it if you're going to do your own bunny or bunnies. <clears throat> so we have his name's Prince Truffles. He came with that name and he's still a baby. So this is his first real hair coat. <laughs> So I've groomed this side and what I did is I cut all the hair from behind his nose, not his whiskers, leave their whiskers alone and there's usually a puff that's fine, but I trimmed just a layer all the way around, just a nice little layer, maybe like this long, because I mean you look at his hair, he's got five inches of hair and he's two and a half months old, and then I trimmed their butts. And I actually do a bit more on their butts. I usually go about two to three inches up. So about that much on their butts. Usually the top of their tail. He's got a really cute tail. <laughs> so top of their tail, because they sit on their butts and their butts tend to get matted. So you have a ton of hair still on top that you can use for your hobby. And you don't have to deal with the dirty hair in back. It also keeps the hay if you want to bring him in the house. So I haven't done this side, and you can tell there's a bunch of mats and hay, and he is being super good. Another reason I wanted to do this video. So I'm going to give him a few pellets. Starting them is hard. A lot of women like to start at their butt and work it to the front. I like to start at the front and work my way back. It's kind of your preference. You do it once or twice, you'll get the hang of it. <clears throat> and the first cuts are just hack jobs. So you want to make sure you don't skin skin. I mean, you're not cutting close. You're cutting an inch out. So, and I usually go on his legs. With him, you can see the tinting from his leg hair that goes into the hair that you would harvest. And I'm just trimming the harvestable hair. So the other thing about this is that this is second grade hair and I can pick the hay out of the stuff I'm trimming and it makes decent wool dryer balls. Quite easy to make. It takes about three rabbits. <laughs> and it's nothing fancy. I need to be careful on their belly so I can pick the hay out of that. I usually do that now. Uh, I'm doing this in my kitchen. I like doing it in my kitchen, especially in winter. It's warm, it's clean. <laughs> so a lot of rabbit trees are dusty, dirty. Um, I keep my rabbits on the back porch. The people we bought this off of raised puppies and she had a puppy mill on the back porch of sorts, just like 10 breeding boxes. And I had no clue what to do with them. And then I got into rabbits and it was perfect. So the rabbits have taken over the puppy area in the back and I just clean the box area once a day with a broom and I mop it once a week and I basically have always clean bunny rabbits. <clears throat> this guy was living in the barn because he's a little bit of a fighter with the other bunny rabbits. 
I, I usually don't mix my bunny rabbits, but I have four right now. Well, I'm about to have three. Um, and the other three rabbits love each other and the male's fixed. So I can keep them all three together and they just cuddle and they're cute. And when I separated this guy out, they were all quite friendly. So sometimes play with your herd. You never know what you'll get. All right. I can see that. So basically what I've done is a hack job to about right here. And I'll finish the rest in a minute. Actually, I'm about there. Uh, other tips for rabbits. So I imagine most of you watching this are new to Angoras or wanting to get into Angoras. I only give mine pellets when they come out. I think pellets are like crack cocaine for rabbits and it makes them a little feisty. And I don't think it really adds to their weight value or their nutrient content. I've noticed that um, rabbits I pull off pellets uh, seem to be more pleasant and I don't really have any changes in their hair coat. I don't show rabbits. I'm not looking for a huge sheen or 10 inches long hair. I'm looking for a rabbit that's gonna grow me a good coat that I can spin for my little hobby. So, now, in the back here, he's got some bunny, baby bunny hair, and it's like more fuzz than wool, and a lot of times I just trim that off. It's not worth fighting. All right, uh, let's see, rabbits, when they start the shed, I usually move them outside. That happens in the summer. Some rabbits don't shed. If your rabbit's not a shedder, that means you need to cut, trim them up once a year. I should make a video on how to do that. It's basically the same as this, except you do the whole body. Alright, so I have here the next thing. Now, my next trick for you is the brush. So you're going to run it from the bottom and up. So and it's all the way around. You start at the bottom and you work it up. You never want to start at the top and then work down because you're going to pull on the hair a lot harder and this stuff on top doesn't really need brushed all that much. Uh, the less you brush it, the less it'll get knotty. Your knots are going to come for when the bunny hops around. So you take your brush and I kind of work it in and then when you start to hit knots, fold it over a little gentle tug to kind of work the knot towards the end of the hairline and then you just let the brush fall out. So the goal is to kind of move the knots in the hay towards the end and I usually just trim that off. So I've got a nice little line of knots right here at the end of my hair. I'm not going to lose much hair over it. Take my scissors and just trim all those little knots. So. Didn't lose much hair, but got a big grouping of knots out. And once again, the big time showers will kind of tisk tisk over this, because you do lose a pretty hair coat. You know that that Google image search when you see the giant bunny rabbit fluff ball. You don't get that with this trick, but you do get cute, clean bunny rabbit with minimal work. <laughs> And for your hobby bunny, that is just fine. We don't all have to have the winner. All right. <laughs> oh, I should also mention this is a satin angora. I find the satin angora is the hardest to take care of. Um, they're kind of hard to find. I only have my one guy, and he was tough, and he's not breeding quality. Uh, French Angora. I think those are just super easy to take care of. Ooh, look at that matting. All right, so I got a big grouping of mats up near his face. Um, when you got a rabbit who's constantly matting in an area, just keep it short. He's happier, you're happier. Why fight it? And this wouldn't be very good hair. It's it's fine. It's just not the greatest. But it is second quality. So 
Now you can start to see it's starting to fluff up. And you can tell when it's you're done brushing it, it, it turns into a cotton ball. All right, there we're getting some good fluff. Nice clean belly. I can run my pick through it. What, and I'm in this video 10 minutes and I about got the side of the rabbit done. And this is his first time. I'm gonna have 30 minutes in this rabbit. And you can tell I'm not being overly hard, but I'm giving a tug. I want that hay out. Don't be afraid to tug on him. All right. And I got that done. You guys got the idea. Let's talk about the undercoat, the belly. So, oh, he's being really good. Some bunnies are just like this. Some bunnies are not. He's a little in shock. He gets some pets behind the ear. Bunnies like to be pet on their jawline. In their ears, it kind of wakes them up. They enjoy it. I have one bunny that almost will kind of purr. He'll come to you and get pets. Yeah, it's a good bunny. Good bunny. I like cats. Pet them like a cat. Pick out a jawbone in the ear and give it a good rub. All right. So, you want to work on their bellies because you can pet them and you fill the matting under there. So you grab them by the front two legs. So I get one right here, kind of pinning him in, and my thumb around the other, and my hand is going to go on his butt. So I'm kind of picking him up. You'll get a hang for it. Little kids have a hard time with this. And I'm going to kind of cradle him, and then I'm going to put his butt down on the table where I can see it with some good light. It's usually it's kind of dark under here. He's a nice white-bellied bunny. And that's all right. And he says he's new to it. So, um, some rabbits don't have any issues with dirty feet problems. Some rabbits will get some bad matting. He's got a little mat right here. Uh, I usually just keep their feet cleaned up for sanitation issues. Let's see here. He actually looks really good under here. I try not to brush their bellies. And if I am brushing their bellies, I'm just gently as I can pulling out hay strands with the corner of my comb. If you got a bunny that has belly dirt, and a lot of females, the little does, they get it. I take my scissors and I just start trimming the fuzz. Because I, here, I'll stick my finger. Okay, there's two inches of fuzz right there. So you're not going to get belly if you're just trimming the top. And they'll get little kind of burrs around the top. Like he's got a little bit right here. I advise don't brush the bellies. So I do try and look between their legs to make sure they're not getting messy. He is. He's got a little bit in his towel right there. Um, you don't, don't brush it, just trim it off. Don't worry about it. No, there's no point in fighting with this. You're not gonna show them. You're not gonna be harvesting this wool. Oh, and his feet. He's got all sorts of dirt in his feet. Look at this. This is Angora rabbits for you. <laughs> I don't like to trim a lot off, but I do try and dull up my scissors a bit. <laughs> yeah, that foot. A little dirty feet. My bunny rabbits live on plywood and linoleum. So, moppable things. He's like butter in my hands. What a good little bunny he's become. He was so naughty with the others. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so I have on my hand, the reason he didn't like that is I have a knot, and it's gonna be a problem knot. Hey, hey, oh, oh, and he's not fighting me over. Good. It's okay. There you go. It's bright. Oh, his rag is missing. I need a gripper thing. Where's my gripper thing? I wonder it's fretting. Now it's right here. Oh, and I can hear his teeth grinding. See his little mouth right? He's ticked. There it is. Alright, so I have a big old knot right here. 
and I just found it. This is why you handle your bunny wraps. A lot of times you'll miss these knots just to make it groomy. And they want these things gone. These are uncomfortable for them. They do not like these neck knots and they get them. And a lot of times the one's between their legs that he's throwing a fit over. Because it bugs his whiskers. He don't like their bellies. So it's right here between his front legs. It's long enough that I can kind of pull it forward. And set him down. And I don't let go of it. Don't move. And thank you. Thank you for <laughs> anyway, you get the gist. You don't hold on. You don't let go of it. So we'll do that one more time because this is always a problem area for people. So you get the bunny up on two on his butt. You find the knot. You kind of pull it where you can work around his neck. Set him down, and then you work the knot from this angle. Don't go trying to cut his belly. Here we go. There's a big chunk of hay that got knotted up. All done. I'm going to give you one last brushing to kind of work these last few cuffs out. And then he'll be ready for his little girl. Yay! Thank you, everybody.